Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Furman Mini in Palm Harbor, Florida, and we have another special one for you. This is a 2019 Mini Cooper S convertible, and what we're gonna kind of wrap this whole review around is value price. This is the fourth Mini that we have done here at Furman Mini, and what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna focus on this convertible being a value price leader because a lot of people are gonna cross shop this car with the Mazda Miata. This one, we'll wait and see what the price is because I want you to watch and review with me this, one, this amazing brand and amazing machine. But when we think of Mini, Mini came out of necessity, which is interesting. There was that oil embargo that took place over in England and there was a need for small, cheap transportation that was really good when it came to MPGs. The Mini and the Mini Cooper and John Cooper Works and everything else really created a revolution and a separate car culture all in itself. And fast forward to today, BMW does own Mini, but what's great is Mini still has that wonderful personality, that image that ties it back all the way to when it first began because out of necessity. What's wonderful though, when you drive a Mini, you're driving a statement especially when you're gonna to go top-down fun. So let's go ahead, focus on this 2019 Mini Cooper S. Right off the bat, you see the Mini lines. I love the wonderful headlight design that they do. They have the headlights, the fog lamps, and then the grill area is really spot on. It really ties into their rally car heritage. And I love the open vents down in the lower portion of the front fascia. As you work your way up, you got gloss black, a little bit of chrome, and flat black. Very nice touch. Now, when you see the S badge on a Mini Cooper, that's extra performance that's gonna be underneath the hood. Now, the one thing I am gonna zonk, fake hood scoop. If you're gonna put a hood scoop on a car, at least make it semi-functional. This one is nothing but a bug collector. It would be nice to have some functionality, but from one side to the other, really has that screaming Mini personality look to it. I love the red with the black racing stripes. I think that one really sets this apart from a lot of other cars out there on the road. Now when we come around the bend, you'll see that what they did was they took the flat black, brought it around the fender, and then check out these wheels. Nice gloss black 16 inch wheel, and that's really going to put it up against the, the Mazda Miata, because the Mazda Miata, you can get 16 inch wheels, you get 17 inch wheels. This is a 16 inch wheel, like the design, like the nice gloss black finish, and it works great with this bright red Mini Cooper S. Going in from the bonnet into the fender, I love the uh, functioning marker light, the side marker light, little bit of chrome to tie it in with what's around the headlights and everything, and there's our S badge again. When it comes to the front windshield, I think it's so smart the way they blacked out the eight pillars with this gloss black, follows it across the top portion. This guy right here, we're gonna zonk that. 21st century, just like on the Miata, they still have an antenna like that. We need to get that out of there. I feel like ripping it off. What I do love though, is I love the side mirrors. Classic, mini style, and that's what this car is about. It may not be the fastest, zero to 60, but you know what? It's got more personality than so many other faster cars out there. When you look at it with the top down, I think it's great the way they take the chrome trim that goes all the way around from one side to the other, even out on the hood. So that chrome trim is continuous all the way around like the chrome door panels. As we come back, it's that classic cabriolet look where you actually see the top. I'm not 100% sold on this. I wish there was some type of flat tonneau cover that covered it. I think it would really clean up the look and just even make it more sporty, more fun. But it definitely looks classic mini, no doubt about that. Tail end of the business, you can see how the black racing stripes come down. I like the way that they do the gloss black across this section here, ties it in with that front fascia part. And then as we drop down, this is the boot area. That's what the trunk is called over in England. You do have fake venting. I am gonna zonk it. I wish that it was just smooth. Why does it have to look like an actual vent? I love the center exhaust. That to me is really just the personality of the car and also the taillight design. If you look at that taillight design, it looks like a traditional Mini. Now, obviously those traditional Minis are smaller, believe it or not, than this one, 
But I'm telling you, pound for pound, this is a direct competitor with the Miata. Let's go ahead, check out underneath that bonnet and see what kind of power we're looking at. All right, guys, we got the bonnet popped. One of the things that I love about the bonnets on these minis is how you have the oval cut out so that when you close the bonnet, the headlight goes right through that opening. Underneath the hood though, what we're looking at underneath all of that plastic is a two liter turbocharged engine that comes with the S. So when you go Cooper S, you're getting a turbocharged engine, 189 horsepower, 207 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in about 6.7 seconds. This convertible weighs in at 2,985 pounds and MPGs combined, you're getting around 28 miles to the gallon. To be honest with you, horsepower wise, perfect comparison to the Miata. It is a little bit heavier because a convertible Miata is gonna weigh about 2,300 pounds. But I think obviously with the Miata, you just have two seats. This, you do have some room behind the driver and passenger. But why don't we go ahead, fire this up and see what this Mini Cooper S sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside the 2019 Mini Cooper S, that convertible. I know right now you're saying, well, if you're gonna compare this to a Mazda Miata, what is the price on this Mini Cooper S? This one has an MSRP around $30,000. Call Derek because right now they're having incentives and rebates to bring the price under $30,000. That puts it right in direct competition with the Miata. Let's see what we get to the door panels. Now, the door panels do have soft material all the way around. There is a lot of dark material, but they do a halfway decent job of using some gloss black and a little bit of shiny chrome bits by the door handle to open. It's in a C shape, looks cool. And then you also have the uh, window button that's also chrome. Soft material on the dash. You have this cool checkered flag design. It's, it's not faux carbon fiber. It's not trying to be, but it looks really cool. And I like the design, soft material. At first I wasn't in love with these infotainment systems the way they are, but I'm really liking them. It's full color graphics. You're gonna use your BMW style iDrive to go through the different functions. And it's so easy and clear and very fast reacting. So I do like that. Radio controls, very simple AC controls. You have some toggle switches. Your start stop is a toggle switch. You have sport mode that you could put this into, which is really great. And if you notice, there's a racetrack and there's our convertible. So that's cool. Up top toggle switches, that's gonna be for raising and lowering your top and also your interior lighting in here. That's how you're gonna utilize that. Now coming back down, you do have a 12 volt and a USB, two cup holders and a cubby. This wonderful slick shifting six speed manual transmission. This is that system that's like the BMW iDrive because remember BMW owns Mini. Everything is rubber and a little bit harder material. So I am gonna zonk this because it is a little cheaper looking here. Armrest is very soft. You open it up and you can put at least a cell phone or, or something small in there. You can even get it out of the way if you don't even want to see it. Good old fashioned e-brake, seats, full leather. I'm loving them, love the material, love the texture. And watch this, it even has the extension for your hammies, for your hamstrings, so that you could tailor the seat exactly the way that you want it. And guess what? We do have room in the back for two passengers. Now, of course, you're gonna have to move the front seats up a little bit, but at least you have the option of that room for the passengers. Why don't you come on over to the business end though? I wanna show you behind the wheel. All right, guys, so we're behind the wheel of the Mini. You do have manual controls, but guess what? On the Miata, you also have manual controls for the seat. I do like the aluminum panel down here with the Mini Cooper S logo, which is a nice touch. My favorite thing though is the steering wheel. I love the size, the thickness. I like also the way that they put the two pieces of leather together. It feels very upscale, very simple buttons, and then check out the instrumentation. That looks like it's right off of a rally car. I love it. I just wish that the tachometer was in the center and the speedometer was over to the left. That's my only zonk for the instrumentation, but very, very comfortable. The seats are supportive. They feel great. Let me go ahead. I'm going to close this door and I want to put the top up real quick just to show you how that goes. So we're going to go ahead, take our toggle switch, and as we hold it down, the roof comes up. Look at that piece coming down. 
that closes up like that, you actually have an option in this car to just do a sunroof. So you could actually just slide it back to right there and now you have a sunroof instead of going all the way back. But why don't we go ahead, if you're ready, I'm ready, let's take this Mini for a spin. All right guys, we left Furman Mini. We're in the Mini Cooper S, that wonderful manual transmission. Really love the engagement of driving a manual, but I also like how the manual engages. Each gear, nice and crisp, great feedback from the clutch. And you know, when you're comparing this to a Mazda Miata, that's really where you're gonna see the, the similarity is I really feel like from a clutch standpoint, they're both very light and they have a great pickup point. There's some manuals you could jump into that are like an on-off switch, and that's really not what you want. You want something that you can modulate very well, and, and both this car and the Miata are both on point when it comes to their clutch engagement and the shifter itself. Visibility out front, I really like being in a Mini. It, it gives you a nice view over the hood. Let's do a little acceleration. way the power comes into play and I think that's gonna be helpful as well now at the end of the day we are comparing a rear-wheel drive car to a front-wheel drive car um, but with the mini convertible you do have those back seats which you're not obviously gonna have in the Miata both of them are very fun to drive and this car has so much personality to it that uh, you're really driving a, an icon same thing with the Miata, but I think you get it even more so. Like there's a certain, um, you know, way that, of feeling and the way that you experience the drive in a Mini that is so much different than, than any other car really currently available for sale. Suspension feels great, seats are comfortable, and of course you have plenty of shoulder space in here. That's another area where I think if you go the Mini route, you're gonna enjoy the longer distance driving because of all of this openness that you have. Um, and I really like the way the dash is low, helps with that visibility out the front. Wind noise is not too bad, to be honest with you. Um, pretty much the same as what you're gonna find in the Miata uh, as well. Um, but very, very connected drive. I feel very uh, connected to the front wheels. As you can see, easy to navigate through traffic. You got that automatic uh, rev matching that it does for you. That's something that the Miata doesn't do. So definitely uh, a huge thumbs up for auto rev match downshifting, especially if you don't know how to heel toe downshift. If you do know how to heel toe downshift, you can shut that off and you will enjoy dancing in this car because I'm telling you right now, from brake pedal to throttle, really perfectly placed. It's really the sweet spot for heel toe downshifting. My favorite part, let's see how she handles. Third gear, on the brakes, very nice downshift. On throttle coming out. Love the feedback, love the feedback. Watch through, through this right hand transition, right left. Really nice. So smooth, like butter. I'm telling you, if you want a driver's car, these minis are very surprising, I'm telling you. And they put a smile on your face from ear to ear. I would love to enter this thing in, our, in an autocross and really just let her rip. And the sound, it's got a nice sound in the cabin. Great weight to the steering wheel. Through this right hand bend here. Look at this, on throttle the whole way. Really, really nice. Brake feedback is good. Nice, strong pedal. I'm just glad that they still make cars like these. 
We're not all just driving hybrids and electric cars. It's nice to have options, that's for sure. But we're gonna go ahead, hopefully this gave you a little bit of feedback, how she handles, how she drives. We're gonna get back to Furman Mini and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another wonderful day here at Furman Mini. Definitely gotta thank Derek, Michael, and everybody else here at the dealership, so accommodating for Rady's Rides to bring this Mini Cooper S convertible to you. Which way do you go? If it was my money, in the end, I would probably go the Miata route, but you know what? This Mini Cooper S still has tons of personality. My recommendation is get behind the wheel, get your butt in the seat, and see how you feel about driving the two different cars back to back. But if these are the types of things that you like to see on Ready's Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on Radies Rides, click the link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. We have the all new Zonk shirt. Check that out. Speaking of checking them out, check out Tom Moshner on Instagram, at Mosh Photos. He's taking pictures of babies. He's taking pictures of different countries. He's taking pictures of adventures. So check out at Mosh Photos and watch him flex for you on film. And just like always guys, I'll see you on the next ride.